people are afraid of two things I've noticed. Firstly, they're afraid of change. They like to keep doing what they've always done. The other thing they can't cope with is difference. And uh, I'm rather different. Boys were not allowed to cry. And I think I wanted to cry an awful lot. I wasn't sporty like the rest of the mob. Um, I was chubby, slow. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be part of the group that somehow that didn't seem to work. So I think I just just faded into the background. I think they wanted me to take over the business. Probably marry, have kids, perpetuate the family line. Um, Why didn't you? All those sort of things. Well, the crazy thing is, I did. Um, I know I'd been cross-dressing back in my early teens, possibly even before that. Um, but never had the opportunity, either for safety reasons or for just not making other people uncomfortable. So I asked some of the friends that I'd built up through some support work I was doing if they knew a, a good GP. And I was only looking for a, a GP. And uh, they suggested that I go to uh, a specialist clinic for the LGBTI alphabet suit um, people at, uh, in North Fitzroy. The first question the GP asked me sort of took me by surprise. He said, do you want to go on hormones? Uh, huh? I hadn't even really given it any serious thought. Anyway, I thought about it over the next couple of weeks and the next time I went back, I asked him, tell me about the hormones. Um, you know, all the issues, the pros, the cons, the risks, the cost, um, and yeah, everything seemed to fit, and I thought, yeah, let's, let's go that way. I went on to estrogen um, hormone therapy, and it's had a humongous impact on me emotionally. I'd spent 60 odd years of actively suppressing any emotion. Um, it goes back to the time as childhood when I was hammered with big boys don't cry. I now have tears at the drop of a hat. Uh, movies, oh, I can hardly go to a movie without having a teary session. And the first thing was basically colourful clothing. Now male clothing generally is yuck colour wise. So the only clothing was feminine clothing and uh, colourful. I haven't had a conversation or seen my middle child for probably five or six or seven years. Um, I haven't seen his two boys. And I'm upset about that, um, not only for my own sake, but also the fact that there's a grandparent there that they're not having any relationship with. There were five of us sitting around the table, my sister and brother and their spouses, and I told them what I've done and where I was going, and said, you know, any questions or anything, and um, my sister sort of said, why now? I haven't had any communication with her since, and um, that's upset me. Because um, yeah. while we've never been really close, um, she's the closest relative that I've got. But perhaps she'll change. Perhaps she won't. But I've got to get on. I've got to get on with my life. I've survived seven decades on. Yeah, I'm alive and kicking. Come out of the cocoon 
The butterflies growing wings. <laughs> Colourful wings. <laughs> happy wings. I, yeah, I'm I'm really incredibly happy. What's your name? My name's uh, Lee, is it? I reckon I'm entitled after 60 odd years to be me. And that's what I'm being. Be me. I'm out. I'm colourful. And you're not going to stop me now.